So my first question is, how was Scoop.it born? Uh, it was born about uh, a year and a half ago, uh, not out of the blue. It's something we had uh, spent a lot of time thinking about. And we were two uh, associates and pretty much we had two major uh, reasons to build Scoobit. Reason number one is that we were in love with social media, as many of us, but we didn't have time to really produce content and to have our voices heard on social media. We love the fact that we can be connected with anyone in the world, but we didn't like the fact that you need to spend a lot of time to create content and actually be heard and be recognized on the web. So we thought, hey, there is a need here. I want to express myself, but I don't have time to blog. What can I do? That's reason number one. Reason number two, we were running another service called Gudget, which is a social media. Something very special, it's a social media where we dispatch content organized in topics, in themes. Right. But with Gudget, we could manage like a dozen topics, topics that we manage ourselves, we, the company, manage ourselves. Say a topic on politics, on sport, on uh, traveling, and food, and whatnot. Perhaps a dozen topics. And the community told us, we love your product, but I'm not interested in art. I'm interested in music in art. And in music, no, not music, in violins. Uh, not quite in violin, actually. I'm interested in acoustic violin played in oriental jazz. Right. And that's the topic that obviously we, we cannot manage. Right. So we thought perhaps we can turn this around instead of us managing the topics, perhaps we could provide a platform for the community to actually build and manage the topic, pretty much to give the keys to anyone to become a publisher. You have a passion, now you can have your platform to express yourself by being the curator or the editor-in-chief, if you want, of this very passion. So what uh, elements did you get from other kind of services that already existed? What, what are the features that you borrowed from, uh, <laughs> from other uh, platforms? Well, clearly, when, when we are on the web, we are not talking about rocket science. We are not talking about inventing the wheels. It's pretty much more like inspiration, like percolation, you know? Right. We build experience on using many products and having some pain points and some pleasure by using this and this product. And at some point in time, we figure out, hey, if I take this and that, that makes sense. So there is not one single product, but for sure, curation is defined by uh, selecting, editing, and sharing. And I believe that right. humankind has been making some sort of curation since the invention of writing like 5,000 years ago. What is new is that we wanted to make it super simple, and we wanted to make it with a purpose, not just the purpose of having a collection, my own collection, but with the purpose of building a magazine, of expressing oneself. So, um, the whole idea of the uh, magazine is really brilliant. So, I would like to know, um, how, is that, how exactly does it work? So, what do you have to do to start publishing? Okay, the, the one thing that you need to have is a passion, or a willingness to express your passion and, and perhaps your expertise on a given topic. Once you have this, and that's the difficult part, then the platform will make it easy for you to become a publisher. So what do you do? You create an account, so you can sign up with uh, your Facebook account or, or Twitter ID, very simple. And then you will say, okay, I want to create, and what's your passion, Maria? I don't know, say. Opera but, music, for okay, example. Very good, but don't, don't take it too wide. The narrower the topic, mm. the better your curation, because you cannot be an expert on the worldwide topic, but really on something very specific. That's the first thing you have to do, okay. to decide on what you want to express. Then you will describe this by just putting a few keywords in the system. Not too many, not too few, just let's say the three keywords. What we do first, we will aggregate all the search engines and APIs that the web provides us with, like Google like uh, Facebook, like Twitter, like Dig and so on, and we will search content for you. And this content will be proposed to you. You, as a curator, you have the last say. Only the curator, the human curator, can decide what will be shown on the magazine. The algorithm, the engine, is just here for suggestions, for searching. Right. So what you do, you've got your suggestions arriving like in a mailbox, and you will, in one click, say, oh, okay, this one makes sense, I, I will take it. That's the selection part. Right. Second part, for being a good curator, you are not only a selector, you are also an editor. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you need to put your own context, your personal touch, your perspective. That's an ed 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 additional line. 
So you pick this. Okay, this makes sense. It's come from Twitter, from an RSS, from Facebook, whatever. But it makes sense for my line. I take it, and now I can, if I wish, edit it. And we do recommend curators to edit, to put their heart and their personal view on what they take. And then one more click, it will, it will be pushed on the magazine. You have options to customize your magazine, but you don't have to. The basic default layout is very, very pretty, but you can push it forward and, and make it really your own magazine by also uh, personalizing, customizing the layout. So that's selection, that's edition. The third part of curation is sharing. Once you have your magazine, it belongs to you. You have a URL, it's like a website, it belongs to you. You can share it. But also, you can connect it to your social media, to your social presence. The purpose of being a curator is to express yourself. So if you edit, it's better if somebody else can read it. So what we do, we give you the opportunity on the same workflow, the same edit workflow, to push to Twitter, to push to Facebook, to push to LinkedIn, to WordPress, to Google+, and to Tumblr. Right. That means that by having selecting editing, you can also feed your social presence in the same workflow. So what are the numbers of uh, Scoop It right now? Okay, so we launched Scoop It in the private beta roughly a year ago, and we opened it up, meaning that we ended up the private period just in November last year, and we reached the 2 million Unix the last uh, five weeks, wow. which means uh, it's a very uh, impressive um, uh, growth. Two millions, uh, it's, it's pure viral. We haven't uh, invested in, in marketing except that talking to people and explaining the virtue of uh, curations, which has been understood by the, by the web. By, by the way, that's something which become uh, quite important on the web. And uh, that's roughly a 30 to 35% growth on a monthly basis. Wow. Except during Christmas, when we had a little bit of a slowdown, which is very good because we found that most of our curators are really passionate about what they do, and a majority of them do it for professional reasons. We have professional people, experts, consultants, brands, enterprises, companies, which use the platform to curate. And of course, they were a little bit less interested to curate during Christmas period. Sure. But <laughs> except for this period, that's um, uh, above 30% of monthly growth since uh, inception. That's impressive. So could you give me a few examples of how businesses and uh, professionals use uh, Scoopit? Yeah, absolutely. So the main cases, okay, we have different use cases because of, right. uh, of the variety of the humankind or something we like. People can find stuff that you uh, can provide on a product you are not planning to. But the main case is we are talking or working with companies or professionals who believe the web is key. They believe they need to be present, to be known, to be recognized on the web. So they have a Twitter handle, they have a, a fan page on Facebook, they have a blog, perhaps they have a site. But that's only infrastructure. That right. basically pipes. If you don't put content on that, uh, you are pretty much stuck. So what do they do? The first reaction, once you have these pipes, is to hire someone who will perhaps be your community manager and, and perhaps talk a little bit with your community. But it's not enough. If you are rich enough and big enough, perhaps you will subcontract to a web agency or communication agency, and they will build some content for you. But in the middle, there is this vast majority of enterprises and professionals. They want to be present on the web, but they don't have content. So we are the content strategy uh, element or, or key. So what they do, they basically use it for producing the magazine, and they use magazine to feed their social presence. With a quite interesting side effect, very positive, is that the SEO performances of the magazine are just outstanding. So basically, the number one reason why company and clothes use Qubit is to be known and recognized on the web to feed their social presence. And we have found other use cases, a little bit less uh, important, but quite interesting. Uh, for example, in education, right. people who use Scoopy to gather knowledge about a given topic and to share this knowledge and to have people interact with the knowledge. Because obviously, this magazine built by Scoopy are social. Right. Uh, anyone can comment, can suggest. Uh, you don't have to just go by the suggestion engine. You can add in the magazine with a bookmarklet, whatever you find on the web. People can suggest content and, and, and so on. So there is a social experience about the magazine, which makes it a, a nice tool for knowledge management as well. But mm -hmm. let's say the core is to be present, to be heard, to be recognized on the web. That's kind of a more profound uh, Wikipedia entry experience, isn't it? 
Yeah, sort of. It's it's a, a Wikipedia more focused. Right. Because you, for example, share information about uh, how to sell this product, how to maintain this product, how to talk to this customer, and what are my competitors doing. All that you can gather in a scoop it, a topic that we will share with, with your colleagues. Right, right, perfect. So what are the uh, perspectives for uh, the new developments or new features that Scoopit might have in the future? Uh, we have ideas to feed our development team for the next uh, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay our, our priority is that first we wanted to make sure that the value proposition is understood and is valid. That was step one. We did it and with uh, nearly 30% growth on a monthly basis, I think we made it right. Second was to uh, release the premium packages, Business okay. Pro. And that's done, but it's quite early. It was done in November, so we have to keep growing the, the user base to listening to what our customers say. We have a, a forum, online forum, when we uh, capture feedbacks and we try to build really the product that the community is asking for. Right. And that's something very important to, to keep pushing. Then we have also to increase our visibility worldwide. Uh, internet doesn't have any boundaries, and uh, I hope and pray for this to stay <laughs> right <laughs> forever. And uh, we actually moved the company to the U.S. We are now incorporated in the U.S. And my associate, Guillaume de Cugis, is now located in San Francisco. And we are starting to see a, an amazing growth and amazing traction there. And that's something very important for us, too. And next, we have to go to more devices. We have an iPhone application. Mm -hmm. Next, we have the Android application, which is not released yet, but coming up in the... You know, in a few days, and we are working on the iPad experience as well. We believe that right. iPad is a fantastic uh, device for this experience. There is something quite interesting about mobility and, and curation, is that mobility has been quite bad for publishing, for producing. It's good for reading, not so good for publishing. What mm -hmm. people have publishing with an iPhone, for example, or a smartphone, that would be photos, of course, status, Hey, mm -hmm. I'm here, or, or Foursquare status, or Facebook status, right. but not in-depth uh, article. You cannot read a, a mobile publisher. Curation gives you this a unique opportunity because when you are a curator, you spend some time and some of your brain juice by selecting the best uh, content, but you don't need to actually type a lot. Right. So you can become a mobile publisher that gives really real-time publication uh, uh, that really makes it possible. So that's why we pushed iPhone and the traction on the iPhone uh, application has been very good. But we want to move further and next is the iPad, of course. Of course. So what will be the differences roughly between the business, the premium and the free plans? Okay, so the free plans gives you all the feature I was talking about. There is yes. a suggestion engine. You can browse the web, collect from the web. You can edit, you can share and you can customize a little bit your uh, magazine. Then when you go to Pro, which is the first level of price, you have two main features. One is comprehensive analytics, which okay. enables you to follow the performances of your topic and of each post within your topics. Very important. Uh, of course, we all always want to know our performances. We want to see these curves growing up, and, and sure. that's nice. Most importantly, our analytics are actionable. You can see what works and what doesn't work, and you can repute it. So that's very important business-wise. Second category of features that we have in the pro version, which is the, the cheapest one, we have features to make it easier or more effective to curate. For example, you can curate as a team. You can delegate the curation rights if you are in a team of two or three by making someone else being able to, to come up and curate with you. And if you go up the next version, which we call the business version, which targets the SMBs, small and medium businesses, so we are no longer talking about a team of one or two, right. but company, they really want to have good SEO and to be present on the, on the web. They need a content strategy, and they want this content to be branded to their own brand. They don't right. want it to be copied, but they want to be your brand. So what we have in the next package is the possibility to totally customize the topic. That's about uh, graphic charts, logos, the, the header. You can replace the header with your HTML links going right. to your website. You can integrate it in your website up to the dom domain name. It's no longer right. .it slash my topic. It's really your business name .com. Right. So what should we expect from Scoopit in the next 6 to 12 months? Well, you will expect to see a continuous growth 
everywhere in the world, and especially in the US, we need to reach this critical mass. Two million Unix in Europe, it, it's good. Two million Unix in the US, it's a good beginning. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, clearly, you will see that the iPad version will be a, a, a little bit of a change of paradigm because we really want to, uh, to make it clear that everyone can be a publisher. And it's a very tricky sentence. And if you allow me, I want to go back to this. Everyone is a publisher could mean everyone can publish crap because it's so easy. Let's do it. Right. That's not what we meant. What we mean, and it's very important, and that the message we want to keep pushing in the coming uh, months is that everyone with a passion and with an expertise, but not necessarily with the time to write or with the skills to be an author, can express this passion and expertise. So what we will see coming up? And that's already very true in, in the platform, is more and more topics, more and more magazines, really high quality magazines where people have put their skills and that their heart. They are not only useful for the curators who can now express themselves, but they are more and more useful for the readers as well. People right. coming now to the platform say, hey, I want to know everything about uh, web uh, marketing and right. I'm good at it, but uh, I don't want to spend time to do it. Oh, I go to scoop it and I see these brilliant professionals having curated topics on this very topic. So right. what I will do, I will follow this topic. So what we will see in the future is more curators, of course, but also more and more readers using curation as a way to find great contents. Right. Mark, thank you so much for being with us today. E grazie mille. <laughs> grazie a te. I tried. <laughs>